Hello, my friends. Welcome to Spiritual Conversation, honest and joyful explorations of ideas to help us align with our true spiritual purpose and live our best lives. I am your host, Jacqueline Clare, Mermaid of the Airwaves, here to take your hand and go on some deep dives together. And today is a long overdue episode. Sometimes the things that are right in front of you sometimes are the hardest to see. And today I am just going to be sharing from my own experience and my own personal perspective, a nice overview of what is Baha'i? What is the Baha'i faith that you, you bring up and you mention and you share books and that sort of thing? But like, what exactly is it? So this one is for you, Carrie, and everyone else who's who's asked me, what is it exactly? I know it's lovely, but what is it? And so I'm really happy to share. And one of the inspirations for this is that I do have a children's book coming out, Noble Beings, Spiritual Handbook for Children of All Ages. It's a bit of a wink, wink, because not only were we all children once and not only do we still have a childlike essence an inner child so to speak but when it comes to spiritual growth and personal development we always have things to learn we never outgrow our need for spiritual guidance so that's really what the the tagline is about and noble beings is just a collection of really short passages and quotes from the Baha'i writings, small, short, for a child to grasp and understand, or a childlike adult, and then illustrated by yours truly, Jacqueline Clare, in a really relatable and joyful fashion. So this is coming into the world, and one of my intentions for this book was obviously the the spiritual empowerment of children of all ages, but also like a, just a really beautiful universal sharing of the wisdom of the Baha'i faith. Whether you are of another faith, whether you are spiritual or not religious, like wherever you are, I think um, most of us acknowledge the need for, you know, a sense of a moral compass and integrity and the awareness of the power of love and friendship and optimism and purpose of struggles in life, all of those things. So um, so that's what the book is about. C- drops on November 9th, links below for my email list so you can be the first to know when you can order and get it in time for the holidays. But without much ado, let me jump in to the Baha'i faith and my personal experience with it. Not to sound too fancy, but um, I'm a third generation American Baha'i. So what that means is I am an American and my grandmother was the first person in my family to become a Baha'i. It was 1963 or 1964. She was a Southern Belle, progressive Southern Belle from Birmingham, Alabama. She married lived in Burma and London and had a bunch of uh, expansive experiences. She had been raised Methodist and was a believer for sure. And even beyond that, she grew up, I'll repeat, in Birmingham, Alabama, born in 1925. And she grew up singing songs in church about Jesus loving all the children of the world, all the different colors, and always believe that was true. And obviously the society around her did not reflect that. So fast forward in 1963-64 when she learned about the Baha'i faith from a door-to-door salesman who was selling great books like um, Shakespeare and that sort of thing. He, He asked her, do you want to know what my faith is? And I bet some of you can relate to this. She said, no, not really. I'm really not interested in what your religion is, but uh, eventually it came out in the conversation anyway, and she found a faith that not only sang songs about the oneness of mankind, but was really trying to live it. And within 48 hours, she had declared, which 
is just simply signing a card, recognizing certain principles of the Baha'i faith. And she was a very dedicated Baha'i ever since. And about 20 years later, my mother became a Baha'i when she was an adult, about 27, and I was born into the faith. The Baha'i faith is very acknowledging that you are not like born a Baha'i, like it's you have the privilege of choosing for yourself, whether you're Baha'i or not. And my mom was very intentional about this and always encouraged me to learn about other faiths, which I still do. And I'm so appreciative that I had this upbringing because she, she wanted me to take it very seriously. And my journey of faith has definitely been one that has matured along with me. You know, it has become deeper and has evolved in form, but I have always recognized myself as a Baha'i. I have a lovely little quote to share with you from Abdul Baha, one of the central figures of the Baha'i faith. To be a Baha'i simply means to love all the world, to love humanity and try to serve it, to work for universal peace and universal brotherhood. And I think this is one of the main things that people who don't know all the details do really associate with Baha'is, that there's a lot of emphasis on playing our individual part in making the universal collective better, you know, having a mindset towards the well being of all of mankind and of being unified. So the Baha'i faith is a universal world religion. It's very widespread. It's not a sect or a branch of any other faith. And Baha'is recognize Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah was a man. It's a, his name is a title, which means the glory of God in Arabic. And to be a Baha'i somewhat literally means to be a follower of Baha'u'llah. Baha'is believe in a God, a powerful, loving, creative, ultimately unknowable essence that made us. And because this beautiful essence made us, our capacity to understand it is extremely limited. However, God has made a promise. God wants to have a relationship with us and would not create us and then leave us just to fend for ourselves. So for that purpose, and since God is too grand to get too close to us, like if you approached the physical sun, S-U-N, in the sky, you would be consumed in its flames. But we receive its warmth and its guidance through these divinely inspired messengers or prophets with a capital P that have been the mouthpieces of God. In the Baha'i faith, we often refer to them as manifestations, like a mirror manifests what's in front of it. So you can't get too close to the sun, but you can hold up a perfect mirror that is flawless and see the perfect reflection of the sun. And Baha'is recognize all of the world's major religions as having been inspired by this process. Abraham and Moses founded Judaism, or what became Judaism. The Buddha, Zoroaster, Krishna, and Hinduism, Jesus, and Christianity, Muhammad, and Islam. That all of those personages were like those perfect mirrors, perfectly reflecting the word, and the will of God. And in all of these great faiths, you find the same messages at heart. All of the world's religions are teaching, love thy neighbor, treat others as you would want to be treated. Love and unity and the profundity of our own being, our own creation.
And where you find differences are the social teachings. At this time in history, in this time and place, don't eat pork, etc., cetera, et cetera. And those are the differences because these faiths all uh, blossomed in different places in the world and different times in history as humankind was evolving and their needs and what they needed to do and develop to, to progress to the next stage were, you know, those specific social teachings. So the Baha'i faith is the most recent of these in the Baha'i view started in the mid 1800s. So think about that, like the Baha'i faith, we have actual, uh, you know, writings from Baha'u'llah, like in his hand, they are considered extremely sacred. But I mean, we actually have passport photographs, you know, like this is a modern religion. So it's wonderful to like have a faith that applies to this modern, interconnected, technologically advanced world. And the so the teachings Baha'u'llah brought are for us in this day and age. This is a highly prophesized day and age. We are a privileged generation of, of mankind to be alive when we actually have the capacity to build world unity because we are aware that we are one world. A thousand years ago, most people didn't leave their village, right? Let alone have seen photos of the earth from space. And some of the teachings that Baha'u'llah has brought for this day and age all sort of boil down to a need to eliminate all forms of prejudice of race, of class, of gender, of culture, of age, of mindset. It is our own prejudices that hold us back the most. So the Baha'i faith is often associated a lot with unity, which, which is very accurate. And the Baha'i faith has brought its own laws and social teachings. And before you go, oh, mm, this is where I stop liking religion, <laughs> the laws part, the list of do not do's. Well, I think you might be really surprised by this quote. This is from Baha'u'llah, like 150 years ago. Chaos and confusion are daily increasing in the world. What? Have you noticed that? they, when are they going to stop? Well, he says they will attain such intensity as to render the frame of mankind unable to bear them. Then will men be awakened and become aware that religion is the impregnable stronghold and the manifest light of the world and its laws, exhortations and teachings, the source of life on earth. So as you can see, when you look around you, a lot of good things in the world. I don't like to just diss, 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 but there is a heck ton of chaos and confusion and division and disunity. And it's going to bring humanity to our knees until we realize, you know, maybe we do need guidance from something bigger than us. And that is the purpose of all the religions, and as I've said, the Baha'i faith is a very modern and contemporary one that is still divinely inspired. It's not just us saying, well, I want this and I want that. We have the personage of Baha'u'llah who has given these divine teachings for today. And Baha'is believe in some wild stuff like men or women and women are equal. <laughs> and in the mid 1800s in Iran, that was pretty crazy men and women are equal, that science and religion agree, and that the more we learn about both, the more we will understand this and see that this is true. The need for universal education, the need for adopting a universal language to still honor and maintain the unique cultures and languages of different parts of the world, but to also have an auxiliary language so that we can uh, communicate without some needless 
barriers. And Matthew McConaughey recently gave a great uh, little like snippet on spiritual versus religious and that at heart religion is spiritual and it should be spiritual that religion is to bind and bring together and not only with you know your brethren so to speak but with all of existence right to align with the the flow and the unity and the oneness of all creation so to wrap this up, and uh, there's so obviously there's so many angles we could approach this discussion. But so what does like Baha'i life look like? Well, I'm sure it looks like as many versions as there are Baha'is, but um, it's the Baha'i faith is a balance of you know your personal devotion, prayers in the morning and evening, and sometime midday reading of the voluminous Baha'i writings, even if it's just a short passage in the morning and evening, but to spiritually nourish yourself, to um, develop, you know, good qualities like telling the truth and being courageous and being concerned for other people and really like reflecting, like, how did I do today? Was I a cool person today? Where could I have done better? Drawing on the power of prayer. And then also being engaged in community life. That includes like collaborating with other Baha'is, but it also includes collaborating with your neighbors to make sure everyone is taken care of. And, you know, once we evolve past basic needs of everyone having food and shelter and, and that sort of care for each other, then it's like, well, spiritual education of children like is there a need in our neighborhood to teach children about developing a good character or middle school age call them junior youth so like spiritualizing our neighborhoods and communities with with all of our collaborators and then of course that multiplies throughout the world so that is a very broad overview of the Baha'i faith from my personal experience and perspective. If you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, YouTube comments. You can contact me through my website, JacquelineClaireArt.com forward slash contact. And remember, Noble Beings drops on November 9th. There are links below to my email list. The shopping window will be just 30 days so you want to you want to get noble beings and orders within the first 48 hours will also get the humanity is one print which is behind me if you're watching the youtube video all right you beautiful noble beings i wish you the best for playing your part in making this world a better place till next time bye bye